Hello, this is Tracy Kiernan from Step by Step Painting, and I'm going to show you how to paint this ladybug. I'm doing this on an 11 by 14 inch canvas, and the brushes that I will use are a 3 quarter inch wash brush, a 4 round brush, and I will use a Sharpie for some details. I'll also use a really tiny brush for some other details as well. We're gonna start with two colors on our palette, Seraline Blue and Titanium White. I'm gonna load my three-quarter wash brush in the water, kind of pat it dry, and load it with the blue paint. We're gonna start at the top and work our way down. Basically what we're doing is painting the sky of this background and the sky is going to fade to a lighter blue here. So I'm going to go down um, about a third of the way down the canvas with this seraline blue, apply a nice even layer left and right horizontal strokes. And then load your brush in the white without rinsing that blue off. Apply the white to the canvas so that the blue will blend with the white to create a lighter blue color. I'm going to go pretty much almost all the way down at this point. So we have this blue that's kind of darker at the top of the canvas and then it gets lighter as it goes down to the bottom. Um, so you see that I kind of brush over some previously painted areas of the canvas as I'm blending. This is called wet on wet blending because the two colors are blending together on the canvas. Okay, so that white, um, I'm loading my brush in pretty much just white at this point and I'm applying it to the canvas, working my way down. Um, going almost all the way down so that we have a lighter color sky on the bottom. So we have a nice blend of the darker seraline blue at the top um, blended with white to make a light blue at the bottom. So notice how I'm leaving a gap right there on the bottom. It's about two to three uh, finger widths. And you can also use that traceable to kind of um, estimate how far down that sky goes. So um, go as far down as possible and leave that gap. Um, we're gonna do the grass next and you're gonna need to load your palette in bright yellow green rinse off the blue and white off your brush pat it dry and load it in the bright yellow green and paint this entire bottom area with this green so this will be the base of our grass we're going to do some grass texture over this but this is just going to be kind of the under color of the grass um, the line does not have to be perfectly straight if you want to make it look like there's a little hill in the background you can do that as well Next, we're gonna do the texture of the grass. Um, you're gonna need to load your palette in three colors. So deep green permanent, which is a dark green, titanium white, and um, you can add more of the brilliant yellow green if you need to. I'm also using a four round brush. On my palette, I'm mixing together the white and the light green color. This is gonna make an even lighter green, okay? I'm gonna um, do this grass and I'm gonna start from the back and then work my way to the bottom. So I'm gonna take this very light green and paint little tiny um, strokes and these are going vertical, somewhat diagonally, but I'm staying generally right here on this horizon line, making these light green grass strokes. 
So it's helpful to get the paint right there on the tip of your brush so that you can get the stroke. Okay, so next I'm going to add some deep green permanent into my mix that I um, originally had of the white and the light green. So now um, basically I'm making a, a green that's kind of a shade darker than the previous one. And what you see me doing is adding another layer of grass. Um, this is the second roll of grass. It is um, overlapping the previous row and you can kind of guess what we're doing. We are going to make our grass darker as we go down. We're gonna make each row of grass just a tad bit darker. And you see me loading my brush in um, a little bit more of that light green in there, just for some nice color variation on your palette. You can grab different amounts of the green. We don't want it to be too dark right away though. Okay, so for this third row of grass, I'm going to load my brush in just a little bit more of the darker green so that it is a little bit darker than the previous row. Um, I believe I'm doing four rows in this of grass. Also, the grass blades are getting slightly um, longer as we work our way down to the bottom. So just keep painting each little grass blade. Um, because the layers are not dry, your greens may be mixing together and that's okay. Um, it doesn't uh, create any chaos or anything if the colors are mixing together. It actually um, adds to the nice um, texture of the grass. So I'm just gonna keep adding more grass strokes in there and then I believe I'm gonna do my um, last row of grass so um, this bottom row is um, i'm loading my brush in just the deep green the deep green permanent at this point so i'm going to fill the rest of that area with this deep green permanent and it's okay that you're overlapping the previous row it's okay that the colors are mixing together and this is going just a tad bit fast so press pause as you need to and then also take a step back because sometimes where it gets so focused into the tiny details um, of this looking like grass or maybe you think it doesn't look like grass but take a step back and you'll notice that um, if you look at it from the bigger perspective it doesn't look all too bad all right so we have our grass um, we cannot do this traceable until everything is dry. So this is a good time to take a break and come back. Or if you want, you can use a hair dryer. If you're doing this with kids, you must supervise the kids with the hair dryer, but you can use a hair dryer to dry the painting. Um, when your paintings dry, you'll if you're using my traceable, um, you'll need to print it out on two sheets of computer paper and tape it together because it will um, fit this size canvas. And uh, lay your sheet of graphite paper down underneath the traceable and it will fit just like that on your 11 by 14 canvas. Um, if you wanna tape the traceable and the graphite paper to the canvas, uh, you can. Sometimes it helps if you're worried about the thing moving, but I don't usually do that. I just hold it firmly with my hand. And I'm using a pencil to trace the traceable. So trace over all of the lines and the drawing will transfer to the canvas. Um, if you're not doing the traceable, um, you can do the drawing on a separate piece of paper. Um, if you're doing this with kids, it, sometimes it's fun to do step-by-step -step drawings with your kids so you can show them how to do the drawing line by line. Uh, or if you're feeling extra confident, you can just go ahead and draw it right onto the canvas without having to draw it on the paper and transferring it. So up to you. And then always, you're always welcome to print out my traceables. That's what they're there for because we're learning how to paint and uh, not necessarily how to draw. Okay. So I am going to um, 
go ahead and lift this up to show you. See, um, one tip that I can give is when you're doing the traceables, the firmer that you press, the darker the transfer is gonna be. If you're pressing really light, it's not gonna transfer very well. And um, the more pressure, the darker it will be. Um, so if you're working with kids, they might need some assistance with that. Um, or you can do the tracing for them, but press nice and firm so that those lines are very bold and easy for the kids to see. Okay, so I have everything transferred over and you can see um, for the most part the drawing on the camera. And basically we are going to color our picture in um, with some using painting techniques. So it doesn't look quite like a coloring book, but we're gonna do the stems of the daisies first. So there's two daisies in this painting, one on the left and one on the right. And I have my four round brush. I'm gonna uh, load it in both the deep green permanent and the uh, light, the lighter green. That gives you some color variation and you can see when you paint, see how I'm loading it in both those colors on my palette. Um, when you paint, it kind of blends on the canvas to create this really pretty color variation. So it's not all one solid color. And this is the round brush. If you're finding that the paint's not flowing as well, you can add just a tiny bit of water to your brush and kind of swirl it into the paint on your palette. And that'll get the paint to flow a little bit better. And then I'm gonna do the leaves. So same two colors for the leaves you're gonna um, paint the leaves in. So I know I made that look super easy right there, but when you paint the leaves in, double load in both those colors, put more pressure on your brush and that'll create a thicker stroke in the leaves. And I know my hand is covering that leaf right there, um, but to get, a, it gives you that sort of two-tone look because you have the light green and the dark green. So right there, I'm just putting a little bit more pressure on my brush, outlining the leaf first, and then filling it in. Um, the direction of my stroke is going in the direction of the shape of the leaf. And it's just the colors are blending together and kind of doing their own thing. So it makes it look like that leaf has instant shading so we don't have to go back or do and do anything to it to render it um, but that's it for the leaves I'm gonna do this big leaf next and look at the leaf and notice that the part that the ladybug's standing on is lighter and then it kind of curls under and it's darker on the bottom so this lighter part that I'm doing here I'm going to make sure that I load my brush in mostly the lighter green. I know I have a mixture of greens on my brush right now, so it's coming out a little darker, but make sure you load it in mostly that light green. And then um, if there's still that darker green on your palette, it'll kind of blend together. Okay, so there's that lighter green because I want to create some contrast here with that under part of the leaf. That under part is going to be mostly that darker green. So it kind of curls under. I'm going to load my palette in some more of that darker green here. A um, little bit of water to get that paint to flow and we're good to go. And then the strokes are contouring. So they're going with the direction of the shape. So it's curling, curving with the direction. Okay, and stay inside your lines. And then that is the under part of the leaf. Okay, so next, I'm actually rinsing that dark green off to go back in here and do the lighter green in there, just a second coat. And I grab some white. So that white is kind of optional, but if you wanna add some different color variation in there, add some tint of white. When you mix white with a color, it creates a tint. And just on the tip of the leaf and blending it back in, and sort of on the base and just kind of blending it in. Not too much because too much white on your brush and the white will just totally take over. We don't really want that. And just do a little bit of white over here on the base of the stem. 
All right, so we have the large part of the leaf finished. And I'm gonna do those flowers next. So really easy, completely rinse all that green off your brush, load it in some titanium white, and paint the petals of your daisy. Um, this titanium white that I'm using for some reason is not opaque on the first coat, so I ended up going back and doing a second coat later to make sure those petals are nice and opaque. So sometimes that happens when you add a layer of paint and it's see-through and then uh, you don't want it to be see-through so just go ahead and wait for it to dry and then add your second coat. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do these dew drops next. So you're going to take your round brush and paint little white circles on your leaves on um, anywhere on the leaf and I believe I did two circles on this leaf two different size circles so one is slightly bigger than the other I did a circle on this one so I'm just painting with the white okay and then I'm going to do a circle on here and this one's going to be kind of towards the top so it's kind of um, you can see that it's right there on the top And then what I'm going to do while this white is still wet, I'm going to take my finger and press on that circle. And the idea is that I'm lifting off some of the paint so that my circle becomes kind of see-through. So when I lift off the white, I can see some of that green below and it all of a sudden looks like a drop of water because it's translucent. Okay, I'm not going to do anything else to those dew drops because I want to kind of let that dry. I'm going to move on to the, um, the fun part of this painting, the painting, the actual ladybug. Um, I'm using the color Pyrol Red. It's a nice, opaque, bright red color. And uh, I didn't mention this yet, but you can always, always use different kinds of red. So if you don't have Pyrol Red, you can use cad red medium hue you can use um, I guess naphtha crimson or whatever red that you have on hand um, so I painted the base of the ladybug I painted around the spots and I'm gonna let that dry before I do the spots I'm gonna do a shadow under my dew drops next and to make a shadow color I'm gonna mix the dark green so the deep green permanent I'm going to mix it with pyrrole red and it's going to make this shadow color um, so about equal amounts it'll be a nice dark color and I'm going to get that right there on the tip of my brush and I'm just going to paint this is going to be so tiny and subtle actually I'm going to add just a tiny bit of water in there because it was sort of drying on my palette there okay Kind of twist it on my brush to get it, the paint right there on the tip but um, at the base of each of these dew drops I'm going to do the shadow so just paint a um, curved line under each of those circles using that shadow color okay doing a second layer of that shadow color in there. And then rinse your brush off after you're done with the shadow colors. And we're gonna add just a bit more white on the base of those um, teardrops. I'm going in super hyper realistic detail here. Not hyper realistic, but making them look real. So if you don't want to do them that detailed, you don't have to, but I'm just taking this white and I'm adding a um, dot in each of those circles there. And I did a white outline on the bottom of each of those circles. So a little uh, white highlight dot on all the circles, a, hi a highlight line on the bottom. And then I'm going to go in and do my second layer of the white on the daisy petals. Mm -hmm. 
Next, you're gonna need to load your palette in some black. So this is Mars Black. Rinse off your brush. We are going to do the spots of the ladybug, um, the head as well. This is, um, if your red isn't dry, then go ahead and do the head part. Um, but actually, I'm gonna go in and do the spots right in the middle of my daisy. So these are just little dots with the round brush, paint little dots for the center part of the daisy. Okay, and then you can go in there and do the head. Um, I wasn't concerned about painting over the face. Um, if you are, you can paint around the eyes and mouth possibly, but I found it easier just to paint the, the circle black and then going back over it again. And then if your red is dry, you can do the spots, but mine's not completely dry yet. So I'm gonna grab a Sharpie and do the antennae with the Sharpie. Yes, you can use Sharpie on canvas. It is okay to do, especially for little details. Or if you have a black paint pen, same thing. Um, my, I'm adding a little bit more green in my leaf there, just a little artistic touch, add some more color variation because my green um, below the ladybug's leg isn't quite dry yet, so I wanted something else to do while I was waiting for that to dry. Um, but my red is pretty much dry at this point, and I'm gonna do the spots. So with the black, paint the spots of the ladybug. Make them different sizes. Do a little half circle thing on the edge. Okay, so I guess this is dry enough. So with the Sharpie, I am going to draw the legs of the ladybug. It's an insect, so it's got six legs. And then if the face is dry, you can go ahead and do the eyes. Um, I'm using my four round brush for this. Um, a little bit of a caution, this round brush might be a little bit too big for these tiny details in the face. So if you have one of those really, really tiny round brushes, that would be perfect for this step. Or even if you have a white, a white paint pen, that would be helpful. Um, but I'm gonna grab my little, really, really tiny, this is a five zero round brush. So I can go in there and use that to get the those eyes more defined. Do the black part on the inside of the eyes. And also, I used this really, really tiny round brush for the mouth. And then there are two little highlight white dots on top of those really tiny black dots. So just that little tiny white highlight in the eye gives it so much character. And then we're gonna do this highlight thing on his back. We're almost done with this painting, by the way. Um, this tiny round brush does a lot of really great detailed work. So I'm gonna do one more highlight over on the left part of his head. And do my touch up here. If I add too much white, I can go back in and touch it up with some more black. But that is it. That is the um, end of this tutorial. You can go ahead and sign your name, show it off. Thank you for watching this painting tutorial. I hope that you enjoy painting a cute spring ladybug with me. Thanks for watching.